So I want to jump right in and talk about indoor track. So just just a couple things um, of sophomore in high school. Irion Knighton goes goes pro to Nike. He's only 16 years old. He's going to be 17 later this month. I believe that this week. Um, yeah, he'd be, 20, he'd be 17 this week. I mean, he's known, he's known to just have a monstrous long stride, and he recently ran a 23-3 in the 200. That's, 20 second, that's tw a 20-second 200, making him the number two among sprinters um, ever under 18. As I mentioned, he's only 16. And then we had another breakout performance from Juliet Whittaker, who ran the 800. So she's, she's also in high school, and she ran a 202. 800 that's incredible i mean most high school boys can't even do that that's and to put that in perspective that time is number three in all time in high school i mean it's crazy it's the it's the third fastest indoor time by a high school ever in this event and to put it in more perspective this time also meets the usa track and field olympic trials qualifying standard so she's eligible to compete to try out for the olympic team that's crazy. And she's only, I think, 17. She's a high schooler. And I think later that week, or maybe that same meet, she joined other three girls and they put together a relay, a 4 by 800 relay, where each runner all runs an 800 and then they pass baton to the next person and do that three total t three times. And together they set an under 20 record, meaning um, this record is within girls or boys whoever girls in this case that are under the age of 20 they set a record of 837 that's an average of 209 per runner i'm sure her performance in that race definitely played a huge factor um, i'm not saying these girls are scrubs they're all great on my opinion i just think she definitely was this was one of the reasons that they broke the record i mean just back to whittaker's individual performance she's this this time has beaten great runners that were around her age and one of them includes aj wilson who's an olympian runner and all all class all world class and whittaker's time almost was pretty close to the number one overtime for high school girls um, this was held by simi watson um, watson held a time of 20178 as i mentioned whittaker ran a 20207 so that that big of a difference so it's crazy um i'm excited to see what both these guys both these girls and guys can do so i mentioned these young high schoolers breaking records and going pro and it makes me think like do these young runners that go pro early they know they skip college they forgo the rest of their high school um, eligibility does that kind of bring them to a path of burning out really early versus people that go pro after college and i think it all depends on coaching um there are some good coaches um, that can produce great college and, and young adult runners, but their methodology or their workout plans just probably won't translate well to teenagers that are constantly growing. Um, you know, they're not, they're, they're mentally not the same level as adults and physically they're not. And also I think their high school coaches kind of prepare them for this burnout sometime. They see these great runners when they're freshmen or, mid freshmen or middle schoolers, and they say, wow, they have great potential. But I want to get to that potential even quicker. And in that process, I think it just leads them to progressing so fastly that it leads to that burnout by the time they're out of high school. And sometimes they kind of disappear and they go to college where they go pro. Um, yeah, I think they're just so eager to get them to the national level because they think that they, they're tapping their potential, but they're just not doing it the most efficient way possible. And the sport of running is a little different when it comes to professionalism. Performance is either consistent or harder to improve in time because it's a very individualistic sport. And it's very normal for runners to have off races or it takes a lot of time to beat their PRs, especially if they're coming off an injury. It's not like you're just going to come off an injury and be exactly where you're at. It takes time. And most cases, like, you don't really see, like, back-to-back, -back, like, national um, champions because it's there's always great runners that just come out of nowhere, or sometimes runners just don't always run consistently. And in terms of like financially, money varies. I think you don't get paid the same way. I mean, for different events, and I think you kind of maximize your money or your revenue when you win races, especially marathon runners, because you can get like six figures just winning one race. And so, like, 
you're not you got to depend on winning races to get you money rather than just salary that your sponsorships or um your contracts give you so it's a little stressful i think for runners it's pressuring and i think when i think about it back then i think runners burned out quicker um young runners i mean and but now we have more scientific research that makes all athletes from every sport stronger and, and better we have coaches trainers doctors that use new techniques and practices to maximize performance and do it in a more gradual way but it all goes down to the coach i just think it depends your coach's outlook are they looking out for themselves for a quick payday to get you to win races right away or are they thinking as in grooming you to make it make for you to make it in the long run so I think it mostly comes down to the coaching that's going to determine your success if you were to go pro right out of high school or during high school. Hi, thanks for watching the clip. If you're interested for the full episode, go to the description for the full episode link. Or if you're interested in more content clips, feel free to check out my channel for all the clips available. Thank you again for watching and make sure to like, subscribe, and share.